Well, good morning again. And it's Pentecost. Happy Pentecost. And that's kind of a, a, a term that sometimes we don't hear a whole lot. But actually, Pentecost is this wonderful celebration of the Holy Spirit. It's as important as Christmas or Easter. It's when the third person of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit came into this world to empower us to create this movement of grace to welcome all people into this living, breathing relationship with God where we could be renewed and transformed. And the Holy Spirit is that, that, that person who guides us. When we follow Jesus, we have the Holy Spirit within us. And we can move in our lives and know that, that God is guiding us, comforting us, and is with us in all ways. But in order to, for that to happen, we as people need to be in that place where we choose to listen to the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit's always moving and moving in this world. And the question is, are we in tune with the Spirit's movement? So I don't know about you, but sometimes for me, it's hard to quiet myself long enough to listen, right? So a couple weeks ago, I started having some ear issues. And uh, the short story of it, it was is that I had some, some damage in my eardrum. And, and the good news is that it's getting better. But I could not hear. And I had some pain. And I thought I had water in my ear. And, and, uh, and just losing some hearing in my ear has been such an experience. I have taken for granted, for sure, how much I rely on my hearing. And uh, as, as I've been in this experience, I, I first had, you know, this stuff going on, and then I was able to get in to see one of my friends, an, an ear, nose, and throat doctor, and when Rachel looked in me at my ear, she said, oh, wow, you know, you have some, something going on here. So she put me on some ear drops and sent me home, and, and I had to come back in a week. So I came back in a week, and and uh, she started me on some steroids. So now kind of the running joke is Dion is on steroids. And uh, I'm a little hyper. And if I drink some coffee, it's, it's crazy. But, um, but all that to say is what I have taken for granted is good hearing. Good hearing. We just sort of assume it, don't we? I was at a, a, a work dinner with two other couples down in South Florida. And the, the restaurant was a little noisy. I have no idea what I agreed to, because I, I couldn't hear the conversation. I was just like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And uh, I thought afterwards, oh no, this is not good. But we're such intricate beings, aren't we? We're really intricate. We need our hearing, our eyes, and we know this about ourselves. The human body is amazing. And you know, we are made in the image of God. And there's another part of our being. We know our physical piece, but we're also body, mind, and soul. Body, mind, and soul. It's, it's this beautiful, it, we're made in the image of God, the Imago Dei. And today we're going to be talking about how is it with our spirit? How is it with our soul on this Pentecost Sunday? You know, sometimes we have our own hearing loss, if you will. Our soul, our spirit kind of gets lost somewhere. Sometimes we have hearing loss because we've gone through something really hard. Maybe a difficulty at work, maybe some relationship brokenness, maybe something we have done, right? We've, we've moved in the wrong direction, we regret it. And then sometimes problems come to us, of, not of our own doing, because life is simply hard. Life is hard. But when we connect with God through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can be assured that, that God's presence is with us, that God guides us, empowers us, heals us, even when we feel paralyzed, even when we're not sure what to do. So into this setting uh, comes the story of Pentecost. Pentecost. So let me give you a little bit of background. So 40 days, so Jesus went to the cross, as we know, and then he resurrected. That was Easter. 
Then 40 days after Easter, he was in this resurrected body. He was walking on the earth. He was seeing the disciples, and there's many appearances. And he tells his early disciples to go to Galilee and to wait for him. So they do, and then there in Galilee, he's ascended into heaven. And before he ascends, he promises them to be with them always to the end of the age. And we call that Ascension Day. So that was about 10 days ago. But he says this, he goes, go back to Jerusalem and wait for the Holy Spirit. Wait for the Holy Spirit. And 10 days later, the Holy Spirit comes to the world, and here we have Pentecost. And today I'm going to tell you a story of two early followers of Jesus, one named Paul, the Apostle Paul, who had been a person who persecuted those early Christians, literally was the one that was hunting them down, whose life was transformed by the Holy Spirit, and then his friend Silas, Silas, who was also transformed by the Holy Spirit. And the interesting thing about Silas is he didn't come from a Jewish background, he was a Gentile. So it just shows us that the church through God is open to all people. There's no barriers to the grace of, of Christ. So into this setting, uh, about 50, uh, 50 AD, so we're going to fast forward 50 AD, Paul and Silas are on this missionary journey through modern day Turkey and Greece. So their lives have been transformed. They are renewed, they are new people. They have given up their old ways, they're following Jesus, they have the power of the Holy Spirit. And they are on this, this missionary journey. And they get to this town, and there's this young woman who is enslaved. She's enslaved. She's actually a fortune teller. And her slave owner is making so much money off of her. So he is using her. He is, he's gaining wealth. And, and Paul and Silas show up, and, and she literally starts following them. And she's actually kind of annoying them. And, he, and finally, Paul turns to her and says, you know, be healed. And, this, and she is healed right there on the spot. Well, her slave owner is angry now. Because you know what happened? The income line dried up. He's mad. And so what starts to happen is a whole mob of people are angry that, that Paul and Silas are messing up the status quo. Sometimes that happens, right? Things get get kind of crazy and so they they pull Paul and Silas in front of this the county officials the city officials and uh, it, there's like a riot going on and pretty soon pretty soon Paul and Silas are thrown into prison they're thrown into prison with all these prisoners and the, and the jailer is told make sure these guys stay right where they are so they're just kind of putting them away trying to stop trying to put peace to the situation and we're going to pick up there with the scripture. So listen to the, these words from uh, Acts 16. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly, there was this massive earthquake, and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open, and the chains of every prisoner fell off. The jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed the prisoners escaped. So he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted to him, stop, don't kill yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down trembling, trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, along with everyone in your household. Even at that hour of the night, the jailer cared for them and washed Paul and Silas's wounds. Then he and everyone in his household were immediately baptized. He brought them into his house and set a meal before them, and he and his entire household rejoiced because he believed in God. Would you pray with me this morning? Lord, it's a wild story, a wild story of grace. How you used the Holy Spirit to transform not only Paul and Silas, but then when they were those people, those 
that spoke a word of grace to this woman that was enslaved and a riot took place and a miracle and, and then the jailer, God. Lord, we need your Holy Spirit to empower us today as we move through our lives and we deal with our own problems and, and we need your comfort and your guidance. So we pray just as this story is, is told, God, that you would speak to our needs right here and right now. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen. So think about the faithfulness of Paul and Silas. They're singing hymns. They're praying. It's midnight. Now, I don't know about you, that if I was dragged away from a mob and beaten and wounded and then thrown into prison, I'd probably be in the corner crying, not singing hymns, not praying. I would be despairing. I'd be fearful. So the question really is, how in the world were they able to be in that place of faith? You know, when you are up close and personal with someone that has had their life transformed, like this young enslaved woman, and their own lives were transformed, you know that there's something more here. There's something more. And having had that experience, they were able to be in that place. And so when the jailer woke up, he completely panicked. I mean, he thought his life was over. Think about it. Not just the two singing, praying guys' chains were off. It's all the prisoners. You see, the prisoners were listening to what Paul and Silas were doing. They were intrigued. And we would say now the Holy Spirit was at work in their lives. So when, when the chains literally fell off their hands, their legs, they didn't go anywhere. And we're talking thieves, we're talking murderers, we're talking the worst of the worst are seated right there. But the jailer thinks that he's done. So he goes and he's so scared and fear and despair take over him. That's life, isn't it? This jailer, he has, you know, he was just put in charge to make sure everyone is there. And then fear, despair, not of his own doing. Sometimes life happens to us and we, we're in that place where we're asking, why? Why, God? And as he's fearing, as he's about to end his life, Paul says, no, no, wait, wait, we're all here. None of us have left. Imagine what the jailer thought. I have a second chance, he's thinking. Maybe there's something here for me. And he runs downstairs into the dungeon. He checks it out, and, and they're all there. And his only response, his only response is to fall down and to start worshiping God. And he's like, I, I want some of that. I need this in my life. What must I do to be saved? You see, friends, the Holy Spirit was there in that jail, in that city, with these people. And, and another word for Holy Spirit is grace. Grace. This free gift that God gives to all of us. And God's grace is for everyone, like I've already said. And God's grace is always searching us out. We read in that psalm earlier in, in worship, that responsive psalm about how God leans in and listens for us. You see, our God comes close to us. Not distant and far away, but close. Leans in. Allows the Holy Spirit to come and to meet us at our point of need. And the question for us today is, are we putting ourselves in the place where we can respond to God's grace? Sometimes it means quieting ourselves. Some of my friends are here. We meet on the beach on Tuesday mornings just to simply kind of quiet ourselves and to listen for God's voice in our life. Are we doing those things that place ourselves in, in places where we can hear from God? I like to think of them as streams of grace, right? Coming to worship is one of those places. God is guaranteed to show up here. When we celebrate communion a little bit later, God's grace is here for everyone. And, uh, so, and we just baptize Addie. God's grace is, is here with Addison. When we baptize a baby, we are saying that God is at work in this baby's life and, and, and wooing her into her own relationship with God. 
Baptism is an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace. Baptism is the church's external recognition, affirmation, and proclamation of provedient grace. This grace that searches every person out and draws each one to God. The beautiful thing about grace is that it can't be earned. There's nothing we can do. God's grace is free. Free. But we have a choice of whether to accept it or reject it, and that's up to us. Just as when Addison, as she grows up, and as, as her parents and grandparents and family and friends and church surround her, she has that decision at some point to say, yes, I'm taking on the name of Christian as a Christ follower. When I was baptized, they called me this name, and now I take it on for myself. In the, in the life of the church, you, we call that confirmation. That's the time when we, we say we confirm what God has already done in this child's life. It's really about our identity in Christ. Paul and Silas had their identity in Christ. The jailer decided to have his identity in Christ. And that's the question for us today. Where is your identity? Where is your identity? You know, this world wants to take our identity. We, they, there's so many politics out there. We could go through every social issue and what side are you on, right? As soon as you claim a side, you're rejected from the other side. I know all about that. Identity, but our identity is found in Christ, in this beautiful image of God. When we start there, when we start there, things fall into place for us. So in that moment of awakening, the jailer says, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? How can my life be transformed like I'm experiencing here, this miracle? And this is what, uh, this is what Paul says in Silas. He says, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved along with everyone in your household. In other words, just say yes to Jesus. We don't have to figure it all out. We don't have to figure it all out. We just need to say, you know what? I feel God's presence, and I'm going to respond. Every week here at First Melbourne, we have Holy Communion, and simply it's a time to respond to God's grace, to say, I'm going to take this next step. Baptism is another response to God's grace. We're going to take this next step in our lives and go with, grow with God. And, and into that place, our, our chains literally fall off. The chains of despair. The chains of loneliness. The chains of fear. The chains of anxiety. The chains of un unsettledness, right? When we're following Christ, it, it doesn't make everything work out, but we know that we are God's, that our identity is in Jesus. What a beautiful picture of, of how the jailer responds, responds to God's grace. What does he do? He takes Paul and Silas and he starts to care for them. He, he washes and takes care of their wounds. And then he brings them to his home and he sets a table before him where they experience the grace of God. They break bread together. There's something about being in community and breaking bread together, and to hear God's voice. So again, we need to listen. It's hard though, isn't it? It's hard to sometimes listen. Our world rushes around us, and we have to quiet ourselves. So I go back to my friend Rachel, to my ear, nose, and throat doctor, and um, I so back for a follow-up, and, and she says, Dion, how, how's your hearing? I said, you know, I don't know. I don't know if it's getting any better. And, and she goes, well, let me look in your ear. Well, she looks in my ear, and she goes, Dion, I see only white. A, a piece of cotton had gotten lodged in my ear. And she pulled it out, and, she, and I'm like, oh, that's a lot better. <laughs> and we just cracked up laughing. And I'm still on this healing path and taking these steroids and such. But all I could think was, uh, I told Rachel, I said, it will make a sermon for sure. But um, we were laughing so hard. And what it reminded me of is I literally needed someone to unstop my ears. 
You know, sometimes I'm moving at such a pace or I'm so distracted by my own stuff that I can't hear God's voice. I literally need people to remind me that God loves me too. So uh, this here at First Church just wrapped up a series called Bless. And the last week it was about sharing your story. So our community group got together and kind of wrapped things up for the year. And, and um, we were sharing our stories of how God has worked in our lives. Some of, some of them were those, those moments where uh, a coach or a friend invited them to listen to what, what was uh, God's love and grace for their lives and how their lives were transformed in that moment. I mean, it was powerful, right? And it just reminded me that it's usually another person that has the courage, just like Paul and Silas, to reach out to someone. That's how it happened in my own life, too. And then I was reminded when I was with my, my friends at the beach this past Tuesday, and as we were just listening for God's voice and, and really asking ourselves, do we really trust God with all the hurts and stuff of our lives, the hard stuff, the unexplainable stuff? Are we going to allow God to, to really deepen our faith, even when we're not sure where it's all going? And in those two instances, and there's so many others in my life, I'm thankful for friends and family, and, but those two this past week really made me recognize God's faithfulness. God is so faithful to us. And the question is, where do we need to place our trust in him? So this morning is the day of the Holy Spirit, Pentecost, when we celebrate God's grace. It's Memorial Day here in the, in the life of our country when we think about those people who have given their very best, their lives, to fight for our freedom. We have so much to be thankful for, and yet we have such a journey to, to continue. And it's my hope it's my hope, it's my prayer that, that as Addison is starting her journey, that she will just take on the name of Jesus for herself, and that she will be raised in the church, loved by so many people. And that's God's hope for each and every one of us, that we would know Jesus. Would you pray with me? Holy Spirit, we are thankful that you are the one that comes and and comes and, and ministers to us in our, our broken places, in our hurts and our pains. And we know that you are present, Lord, and you are always searching us out. There's no place we can go to hide from you. You love us so much, and your love is a free gift, God's grace. We don't have to get all cleaned up first. We don't have to put everything right. You come and meet us right where we are. And you give us that choice of, of to take a next step and to believe. We thank you for the, the story of, of, of the jailer and Paul and Silas and the faith and transformed lives. May our lives be transformed, Lord. And now as we come around this table of, of, of grace, this simple Eucharistic meal, bread and juice. God, we pray that we would just kind of take some time and just do a, a quietness, a review of our hearts. Lord, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. God, we failed to be an obedient church. We want to be obedient. We want to follow you, but it's hard. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We've, we've sometimes don't listen to the cries of the needy around us. Sometimes we wander off in our own way, taking control. So God, would you forgive us? Help us to start a new right here this morning, new day. Free us, God, for joyful obedience. 
where we want to serve you with our hearts are full and joyful. Free us for joyful obedience so that we can serve you and share Jesus with all people everywhere.